Welcome to Samstra Games, the place to find new strategy games and welcome to 2020. Today we're going to talk about the best strategy games of 2019. When I talk about these games, I will just tell you their genre and then I will mostly talk about what I really love about these games and what makes them unique or special. If you want to know more about the games themselves, there's a link for a Let's Play for each one of these games in the description. And in my Let's Plays, I usually introduce the game, talk a bit more about it, and explain how it works as we play it together, so you can check that out. So let's start this off with number 10, Fantasy General 2, which is a turn-based combat strategy game. First of all, I love the focus on the story. I think the story is very good. It's very fun and interesting. Also, the game has a lot of different units and the graphics of this game is just beautiful to look at. Like, it's really, really beautiful. Different units, like for example, archers have special abilities like defensive fire, which can be really fun, especially if you mount a lot of archers together. You can get a lot of different defensive fires, which can be super fun. You have magic. This game just like has it all. It's, it's a beautiful game. It's a fun game. The story is great. I highly, highly recommend this one. Number nine, Ostrip, which is currently in early access. Ostrip is a city building game set in Ukraine in the 1800s. What makes it different from a typical city builder is how detailed the game is. Like if you, for example, look at even like just something as simple as building a building. You can see that instead of it just being automatically built, you can actually see the person going there and slowly build. Another thing I love about this game is, for example, if you want a fishing dock to work, you're actually going to need both. Or you want to carry stuff around, well, you need to build cars. Another feature of Ostrif is that you have these sort of like families that live in the houses and they have sort of like their own money and they buy things and if they run out of money they leave the house. So you need to make sure that they have enough money. And with this is coupled a different feature where men and women can do different kind of jobs. So they cannot all do the same jobs. So you need to make sure that you can provide enough jobs for both men and women to make sure that the families are sustained but they're not going to leave you. And that's kind of like a big challenge of the game. And I think it's very fun because it gives kind of like a different spin to a city builder. Number eight, Station Flow. Now this is a game that I just started playing. I absolutely love it right now. It's a game where you build your own underground train station and you have to sort of create connection between the different exits and the train lines. And you have a lot of different kind of people that have different kind of preferences. For example, you have elderly people who cannot use stairs and other things. And it's a really fun game. It has a lot of progression at the moment, but it's still in very early access. So I'm quite excited to see how much more this game is going to give us over time. Number seven. Well, the match is an early access game that just came out on Steam. So it's a turn-based combat game. And what I love about this game is the focus on the story. This is a very beautiful game. It sort of has like comic book art style. And it really feels kind of a bit like creating a comic where essentially you're creating your own story. So in between combats, there's like events that happen and you can control what your characters do. And it creates their desires, their relationships and stuff like that. And then the story really continues, like the relationships affect the combat combat, they affect what happens next, and it's really like writing your own story in the game. Also, the combat is very interesting in the way they behave when it comes to magic. Instead of having like typical wizards who do things, you sort of fuse with different environment to objects, and depending on the object you can use certain things. For example, if you fuse with wood, you can usually do splinter blast, which does a lot of damage. It's more about using the environment the right way. So I think that's really interesting. I had a lot of fun with this game, and I feel like this game is kind of unique, because it gives you a little bit of a different experience than a lot of other turn-based combat games do. Number six, Deck of Ashes, which is a roguelike deck builder. So first we got to talk about the feature that the game is named after, Deck of Ashes. So normally in roguelike deck builders, if you run out of cards to draw, then you just take your discard pile and you draw from that. Here, instead you have to pay your health to be able to get some cards back from the ash bag, which is essentially the discard pile, which is a very interesting feature and kind of changes the way you play the game. Also, some cards have a special mechanic that only works if they are in the ash deck. The game currently has four characters. One of them is in a beta Magnus. I have Let's Plays for three of them. 
and it's a very interesting game it has a very nice story it's very beautiful and what i love is that each character has a lot of different mechanics so it's a lot of different players depending on who you play with so you should definitely check it out number five transport fever 2. Now this is one of the best transport games out there. You essentially transport passengers from city to city and then you transport resources, for example, from mine to different factories and then the end product to different cities. Now what's interesting is that the games go through three different eras. So you start with, for example, horse carriages and then you move on to cars and then you can even move into the future. The game has trains, buses, airplanes, boats, all sorts of things. And it is really one of the best transport games out there. Number four, Field of Glory Empires. Now this is a 4X strategy game and it's absolutely amazing. First of all, you have a, diff a lot of different countries and so a lot of replayability, which I love. Second thing I love about the game, that the game is simultaneously sort of very complex, but also very simple. And what I mean is that there are a lot of sort of features that are kind of working in secret. For example, the way the trade works, it's kind of like sort of hidden. In the sense that you don't actually choose like i want to trade this or i want to trade that and you know it kind of works like automatically and if you know how that works you can kind of utilize it to make a lot more money but if you don't then it, it like doesn't bother and i feel like this game is very complex in the sense that there are a lot of things like this that like if you don't want to worry about them you don't have to but if you do learn how they work it can make your games that much more easier that much more like deep and complex which i really love about this game and it's a, it's a lot of fun highly recommend it Number three, Unity of Command 2, which is a war game where you play as the allies in World War II. So the way the games work is that you have missions and you need to complete objectives in certain amount of time. So a big part of this game is not necessarily whether you can get the objective, but it's whether you can get it quickly enough. Now you have some main objectives, then you have some bonuses. Now what's really cool about this game is this game is very deep and very complex. There's a lot of different things that are maybe a little bit hidden, like you don't necessarily see them immediately, kind of similar to Field of Glory Empires actually, where there's some mechanics like if you don't know them, you can still play the game on easy, maybe you won't finish all the objectives, but you can still play it fairly easily. But if you do know them, you'll understand why it's behaving the way the game is behaving, because it's really deep inside, and you need to kind of learn that how that works. So I'm really big fan of this game, I make guides for this game, I'm playing this game a lot, so... If you're on this channel, you probably know that I really love this game. Number two, Spellcaster University. And this game, this game is just like everything you could ever want. You are building your own wizard school. How can you ask for more? This game, this game is an early access right now. Now you build your own magic books, you have different kind of magics and you want to focus your different students in that and once they learn a certain type of magic you get the points for that and the more points you have in specific mana the more classrooms or you know artifacts you can have for that specific magic. What I love about this game is the graphics. It's a very beautiful, it's sort of fun, easy going and the creatures are all, everything is sort of very cute in this game then there's also a main story which kind of makes you build different universities in different areas sometimes you know you can go like to a volcano or to heaven and there's a lot of really interesting stuff so i highly recommend this one and if you haven't played it or at least watched someone play it you should definitely check it out and finally number one and i mean if you watch my channel you know which game is gonna be here and of course it's cliff empire it's an absolutely amazing city builder. It's the best city builder I've ever played, hands down. You start off in like a post-apocalyptic work, something bad is happening there, we've gotten into space and now we're coming back and we're gonna build stuff on cliffs. So first thing you have in this game is space management. The cliffs are small, so the big part of the game is figuring out how to put all the things you need to into the space. Then you have some disasters, which you might say, well, that's not that special. That's a typical in City Builders game. Well, yes, but each disaster gives you sort of like an honor point. And if you have enough honor points, you can unlock a new set of buildings. So this is a different thing from research, just like unlocking new buildings. And a huge part of this game is like every time you feel like you've built everything, you unlock a new building. It's not like a, like a one new building. Okay? It's not like maybe I had a, I don't know, a farm and now I unlock a better farm. No, it's a whole new set of buildings. It's like, for example, suddenly you can build on the sides of the cliffs 
which is a huge complete difference like you get a, a whole new space where you can build and that's really cool because suddenly the game gives you a whole different look at it which is super fun now then you do this sort of thing and after a certain time you unlock all the new buildings and you're like this is where you would in a normal city builder it would be over because you've gotten to the mid late game you've built all the stuff you've unlocked all the new buildings so the, is that the end for this game oh no this is where this game begins with the story like task so game gives you different things that you have to do that are actually based on the story and if you do enough of them you can unlock brand new areas where you can play the game and again it just keeps moving you in the story so what i love about this game is like in the normal city world you would be long gone by now but in this game, you can just keep, keep, keep playing because it gives you the story, it gives you a new area and the new area has its own specific challenges and it's just, I'm not going to show you the new area because I don't want to spoil it for you. But this game, it's just the city builder game for me. I love it so much. Now tell me what is your favorite game of 2019 and which one of these games do you like the best? And you can click anywhere to watch some of the Let's Plays of the game mentioned. I'll see you there. Bye-bye.